Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Is gentlemen a word? They're gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What the heck? My trunk isn't unlocking. There we go, it's unlocked. Um, anyways, sorry about rambling on right there. I am in my truck looking for something I picked up yesterday. So I've got some stock injectors from Max. I'm gonna be taking the chip out of the ECU and throwing these stop stock injectors to see if it runs perfectly. If it does, then I'll be able to install some other parts and then uh, put the 700 or 800 CC injectors that I have and go retune with my tuner, Carlos. Another thing while we're watching this video right now, I am shooting at 1080p at 60 frames per second. On the last video, I believe I was doing 1080p at 30 frames per second. And uh, the video that I went to Orlando, which, yeah, I believe that is the last video, um, when we were at the car meet the night before the uh, racing on the street, or the, the compound racing, sorry, it's a little dark, that night I was shooting in 4K, but on very bad light exposure. So uh, I'm just testing out the different features on the camera itself. Uh, like I said in the previous videos, I need your guys' feedback to know exactly what it is that you like and what you think is the best. So I just got the injectors from my uh, truck right now and I forgot that I needed to grab something else. Without further ado, I'm gonna set the camera down and I will be back in just a moment, guys, in a blink of an eye. All right, I am back. So while we're here, I wanna show you something before we get started. I just got this in the mail, uh, day before yesterday, or yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday, actually. So this is an intake manifold that we're gonna be using on the B20 for the CRX. One thing that I do have to modify on it, look how small the uh, entrance is right here. This is probably set up for like a 66 millimeter from like the, the looks of it right there. Obviously I have a 74 millimeter spray plate and uh, throttle body. I'll probably modify these studs as well. This one's loose and this is just a threaded hole probably for a bolt. I'll see what needs to be done. Obviously this is gonna be bored out to 74 so it can uh, accept the throttle body and whatnot like I just said. And that will be going on as soon as we are ready to go get retuned. And I am still trying to figure out the autofocus. Is it autofocusing? It doesn't look like it's too focused right there. But um, we will continue to try to work that out, see what we can do for focusing. Anyways, uh, without further ado, I'm going to open the hood right now and take out those uh, 1600cc injectors that we put in. Uh, I keep on thinking that it's that, that that's the issue. I mean, a couple people have told me that they agree with me. A few people have told me that they think it's other things. But um, I think this is a concrete way of figuring it out. Anyways, without further ado, like I said, I'm going to pop the hood. I'm going to start working on that right now. And uh, I'll probably try to use the time lapse feature on this that I just figured out how to use. So I'm going to try that out right now and let you guys join me for the ride as well. The new injectors are in, well not the new, but new to me right now. The 240 OEM uh, OBD-1 injectors are all plumbed up and whatnot. I already turned the key, pressurized the fuel rail and everything, make sure that the uh, injector seals aren't leaking or anything. Now I'm gonna go underneath our carpet. You guys have seen me do this already. I'm just gonna take the ECU cover off, pull the chip, and that should revert it to like the OEM limp mode map. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. At least so it'll be calibrated for the 240 injectors. And uh, from that point forward, I should be able to start it up and see if it'll at least be able to cruise down the block. Obviously low RPM, just to make sure that the low RPM misfire that it has or the low throttle position misfire is in fact the injector issue. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to pull that off and then I'll pull the car out and be able to start it for you. There's that chip. I'm going to have to be very careful with this. I'm just going to set it right there for the moment. And uh, ECU is all closed back up. I'm just going to pull it right outside. That way it doesn't stink up my garage more than it already is with all the fuel, all the smell of fuel. And then I can uh, start her up and see if she'll at least idle and rev up freely on low RPM. Obviously, like I said before, this is just going to be like a low throttle position test. I'm not planning to beat on the car. I'm not planning to wide open throttle it at all. All we're trying to do with this simple test is to see if it's able to have that low uh, throttle position response. The misfire that it was having, I feel like it's the injector not being able to have a low pulse width or whatever. 
Uh, anyways, we're gonna do that right now. Um, if this does work, then the plans for the car is to put the intake manifold on. When I got tuned, my tuner said that although I ported out this B16 manifold, it is still designed for a 1.6 liter uh, car, the B16 obviously. Uh, the plenum is way too small to breathe for the 2.2 liter which is in this car. So essentially, if you saw the dyno, um, the dyno video, when the RPM starts going up, the power goes up and then kind of like plateaus. And then at that point, it's just the motor's breathing very restricted even though I have the big intake, the big intake pipe I mean. Um, so yeah, it's not getting the sufficient response to air, if that makes any sense. So uh, hopefully this should fix it. Then I'll go with the different injectors. The I think it's 800 cc's. I have to look up the part number that I have. And then uh, we can retune and hopefully have like a, a more streetable car, if that makes sense. Uh, I had a lot of comments asking what this was. The cluster lights don't work on the CRX, so I zip-tied a little Harbor Freight uh, light. And that works perfect for night. So, uh, yes, it's ghetto, but, you know, whatever, it's a Honda. Let it turn over a couple times. Check engine light is there, obviously, because there's no chip in it. Hopefully it'll still start. I think it should still start, from what I've been told. And it starts off perfectly. Obviously with the check engine light. But it sounds so much healthier at idle. The header is still broken, so you hear a lot of sound from that. I'm gonna step away and talk for a second. I'm just gonna let it warm up real quick. It sounds like a big ticking sound, which is just the header which is cracked on one of the runners. So while that warms up, uh, if you hear that in the background, that's exactly what it is. There's no bent rod, there's no spun bearing or nothing. That's just what the, the noise is right now. Once I get this injector thing situated, I'll get another set of headers or see what we can do with this and then we'll go from there. But right off the bat, the idle sounds so much better. I'm gonna give it another minute to warm up, then I'll take it for a drive. Okay, so it is indeed in limp mode. I can't go over 3,000 RPMs. It like cuts out if you do that because of the limp mode, obviously. But I'm at very light RPM, or very light throttle right now, and it actually cruises. Something that I've never been able to do on the previous setup because of the injectors not being able to function well on a light duty cycle. I'm really happy to see this. This means that once we retune on the 700 or 800 cc injectors, like I said, I'm not sure what they are, that it should be so much more streetable. The misfire is pretty much gone at idle. My reasoning behind that is because before it was just basically dripping into the cylinder. Now it's actually atomizing correctly. But with that, now I have a much higher raised RPM at idle. Before it wanted to die out at like uh, 1100 or 1200 RPM, which is what I set the idle, dying out. Now it's the same settings, same throttle screw and everything, and it's right over 2000. Which is funny because that's almost the limp mode limiter on this. But I, I'm super happy, my oil pressure is perfect right now. My temps are almost at operating temp. Obviously it doesn't matter because I'm not really gonna beat on it. but. It sounds so healthy. The motor sounds great right now. So uh, this pretty much, right off the bat, tells me that I found the issue and um, I know what I need to do in the future to correct it. Oh my God, guys, you have no idea how happy this makes me. I'm sorry if you can't hear me very well, but I just wanted to record. I'm on my way back home. I took like a five minute cruise. It's running damn near perfect right now. And that goes a long way from how it was running before with the other injectors. Like you guys have seen on wide open throttle on the old setup, it ran perfect. At cruising, no matter what we did, it was always bad. Right now I'm at like 5% throttle cruising, something that I could never do on the old injectors. So I'm pretty stoked right now. I'm gonna call my tuner right now, see what we can set up for probably like the next week or next two weeks, whatever we need to do whenever he has time. Uh, I'll head back to Orlando. I'll first put the new intake manifold on, then I'll put the new injectors on, and we can actually retune on a streetable setup that's partial uh, throttle responsive and partial throttle happy. All right, so I have the CRX back in the garage right now. I'm gonna set the light off just so you can uh, not be blinded by it. <laughs> I know I am when I look at the video sometimes. Anyways, I still have the OEM injectors in here. Uh, next thing to do on the agenda is I took off the vacuum line that goes from the uh, booster to the check valve, from the check valve to the manifold because I'm looking at the new manifold that I have and it has this uh, one little bung, I guess you could say it is, nipple, whatever you want to call it, uh, basically where the uh, booster line goes to. 
is much smaller than what I need. But I noticed that it is just like a regular threaded component. I'm going to go to Home Depot and probably just get something that simply goes in there. I am going to get another uh, block off for this right there. And uh, that way we can have the plenum just clean flowing. And I don't have a need for a vacuum line right there. Like it's not a boosted car, obviously. But it's cool that it has like all these little extra options. Like if you want to run a sensor or something. Uh, it doesn't have an option for an IAC and IACV. But it's not like I'm using mine anyway. I don't even think I have mine uh, on there. Yeah, I ended up plugging the ports on this, so there's no IAC. Um, so it is pretty much just like a bare cylinder of air, I guess you could say. All that's left to do, like I said, is grab those fittings from Home Depot or Lowe's and port out the intake side for the throttle body right there. Uh, if you notice, like on the flange side, the ports are pretty small, which I just saw. Uh, once I get the gasket off and the old manifold off, I can actually see how much of a difference it is. Worst case scenario, I may just have to cut a little bit just so it flows a little nicer. I'm going to clean up the surface right here. Uh, that way it's a nice ceiling surface. And I also want to get a new intake manifold gasket. That way I don't have any risk of any leaks or anything. And uh, probably in the next like two or three days, I can actually install this as well as the injectors. Uh, I just posted on one of the sports front wheel drive pages about these DECA injectors that I have. So uh, it has a part number. It actually has two numbers on them. I'm not sure if my camera will focus, but... Essentially up here, there's a part number and then down here. There's another part number the top portion indicated online that they were around 800 cc injectors But I couldn't find the secondary number online So a couple of people on the sports formula drive page were able to help me out and they told me that it's only the top number that matters on those and they have like a whole uh, injector flow sheet for DECA and Symes Symes I think is the other uh, type of injector. That's very similar to that one and uh, it told me that it was an 840 cc injector, which is plenty for 93. Uh, it might be a little on the lower side if we end up going like a Hail Mary on E85, but it should be more than enough for what we're on right now. It's only on a hunter shot. It's not anything crazy. And it is a uh, dry kit and it progresses, progresses the fuel in through the injector. Um, so yeah, that's going to be assembled in the next couple days. I'm just going to run over to Home Depot right now. First, I need to do a stop at the post office to drop off some shirts. Thank you guys for the support, by the way. I just sold uh, a whole bunch of merch in this last week. Last night, I ran a sale, and uh, I'm shipping out the, the stuff from the sale right now. But anyways, uh, thanks for the support on that. We're going to head over to the post office right now, ship those shirts out, then go to Home Depot, get the stuff necessary for this, and then I have to work afterwards. I have to go to work afterwards from that. So uh, stay tuned for the ride, and we'll see you at the post office. Alright, so I just pulled up to work right now, well to the parking lot, uh, I'm going to go in in a couple minutes. I just have to call Advance real quick. Last time I went to pick up uh, an intake manifold gasket for LS, they didn't have any in stock, so they ordered one. I bought the one, obviously, that was a couple months ago, and instead of reusing it, I'm, I'm just going to order another one with them. Uh, I doubt that they have it in stock, so I'm just going to call ahead, and I'll probably pick it up tomorrow or the day after, whenever they can get it in town. Um, but yeah, that does pretty much wrap up the video for today. I picked up the necessary fitting 3 8 thread for the uh, brake booster. I also got a, uh, uh, I also got a fitting that has the portion that's able to slide into the booster hose. It is very tight right now. Pause. I'm gonna add some like lubricant or something, and if it doesn't work, then I'll end up shaving the outside a little bit, um, and then I can actually get it to fit correctly. As for the uh, cap or the plug per se. 
I got the plug that I need for that and after that just port the manifold and throw everything together but anyways thanks for watching guys I'm so happy that we were able to figure out the uh, injector issue uh, just by putting the stock injectors thank you to max for letting me use those in the time being and pulling the chip we were able to see that it runs well on a stock map so that pretty much right there just tells us that the injector was the problem thank you guys for supporting me thank you guys for actually uh, tuning in subscribing and watching all the videos hitting the like buttons I appreciate it and thanks for everybody who gave me their suggestions on what it, they thought that it could be a lot of you guys said it was fuel related a lot, a lot of you guys agreed with me when I said that it was the injector problem and um, for the other ones who said that it was other things thank you for your input anyways even though that we found that it was one thing it doesn't discredit your um, your help it doesn't discredit your help at all so uh, thanks for watching guys we'll catch you on the next video hopefully I'll be installing the intake manifold and we'll see you then peace out